In this tutorial, we're going to look at variation. The first aim is can you describe the causes of variation, and then can you explain the difference between continuous and discontinuous variation. Variation is a way scientists acknowledge that there are differences in the physical characteristics within a species. Sometimes these aren't particularly obvious. So just have a look at these penguins over here. Initially, they all look almost identical, but if you look closer and maybe spent a bit more time with them, you would soon realise that plenty of variation exists between them. For example, there'll be variation in the length of their beaks, variation in their wingspan, in their mass, in their height, even subtle variations in their coloration. And those are just the things we can see from the outside. I mean, they could have variation in the size of their heart or any internal organ for that matter. The point is variation exists. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's more subtle, but it's always there. So why is variation actually important? Well, let's say, for example, that these plants are exact identical clones of each other. There is no variation between them. Well, for one thing, if there was no variation in the world, it certainly would be a much less interesting place. But there's a far deeper issue at work here. You see, all these plants have the same strengths, but also the same weaknesses. If the environmental conditions that they're subjected to changed, then they would all suffer. For example, if a disease affected one, it would affect all of them and wipe them out. You see, variation is essential for the process of natural selection to work. To look at it another way, imagine this line represents evolution, with the first life form to evolve 3.5 billion years ago, all the way up to present. I think it's fair to say that up to this point, this huge expanse of time, life wasn't quite as interesting, relatively speaking. Well, not at least in terms of variation. You see, it pretty much went like this. Cell divides to make two cells. That cell divides to make four cells. And so on and so on. Any variation that occurred was largely due to genetic mutations being passed from one generation to the next. But around this time, cells developed sperm and egg, and suddenly life became so much more interesting, so much variation in life. We developed multicellular organisms, we developed reptiles and mammals and amphibians and fish and insects and all sorts of things. Things which, quite frankly, make the natural world mesmerising. So there are three main causes of variation. The first is to do with the genes you inherit. So I've already talked about sperm and egg. So fertilisation is the process where the sperm fuses with the egg and more specifically the nucleus in the sperm and the nucleus of the egg which contains the genes from the female fuse. So a baby will inherit 50% of its genes from its mother and 50% of its genes from its father. Because they will inherit characteristics randomly from the mother and the father, that would explain why you seldom look like your brothers and sisters. The main point here is sexual reproduction is a major source of variation. The second source of variation comes in the form of genetic mutations. Your genes are sections of DNA that carry information about a specific characteristic. So DNA is basically made out of a four-letter code. You can see each colour here represents a different letter. The sequence of these letters will determine what characteristic you have. So let's say this is the gene for eye colour. Now this set of instructions codes for blue eyes. But sometimes DNA just randomly mutates. Sometimes chemicals and radiation can accelerate this process of mutation. The result is the base sequence of DNA changes and that in turn can change the characteristic coded for. So you can see the mutation has resulted in the offspring which inherits that mutation developing green eyes. So once again, genetics is a source of variation, either through sexual reproduction or genetic mutation. So if it's not your genes, what else can affect the way you look? Well, quite obviously, it's the environment. There's some pretty easy ways to model this. For example, if you spend more time in the sun, you'll develop a suntan and you'll start to look different. If you hurt yourself, you may end up with a scar, a permanent scar, which again adds to variation. If a plant receives more sunlight, it may stay green, whereas those which are deprived of sunlight look yellow. 
Some sources of environmental variation are more subtle. For example, twins in developing in the uterus, one twin can actually accidentally put pressure on the umbilical cord so the other twin doesn't receive as many nutrients and that will affect their birth mass and even possibly their mental development. So all these things are environmental causes of variation. The final factor is a combination of your genes and environment. This is the most common cause of variation. You see, it's very hard to separate your genes from your environment. You are constantly receiving environmental stimuli, and your genes are responding to that stimuli. So a good example of this would be height. Your genes will determine the maximum height you can grow, but depending on your diet, which would be the environmental factor, you may grow fully to that height, only halfway to that height. For example, if you don't get enough protein, it will limit your growth. So you can see how genes and environment play off against each other. Weight is another really good example of how genes and environmental factors interact to bring about a characteristic. So your genes, your environment, and a combination of the two are the main causes of variation. Done. There are two types of variation. Some features vary continuously, whereas others vary discontinuously. It's important that you get the right definition for these. So with continuous variation, measurements vary within a range between two extremes. We'll have a look at that in a second. With discontinuous variation, measurements are categorical or discrete. So what does that mean? So let's look at continuous variation first. In this one, we're looking at the feature of height, and here we're looking at how many people are a specific height. Now imagine over here a shorter end of the spectrum, here a taller end of the spectrum. And what you can see, there's generally less very short people and fewer very tall people, with most people being average height. This is what I mean by measurements vary within a range between two extremes. So continuous variation, or features that vary continuously, will often give you this pattern, this kind of up then down pattern. We call this shape a bell curve, and we can also describe it as a normal distribution. Logically, this makes sense. Imagine something like birth mass. Obviously, there's a selection pressure against being very heavy upon birth or being very underweight upon birth. Those extremes are less likely to survive, and that's why they are fewer in number. Natural selection will favour the average. Generally speaking, features which vary continuously are coded for by many genes, not just one. With discontinuous variation, I said measurements are categorical. That means that either one thing or another, you don't get this clear pattern, this continuous variation as you did before. So you can see here we're looking at eye colour and the frequency of people for specific eye colour. You can see that brown is the most frequently occurring characteristic here and blue eyes is the least frequently occurring. Let me put it this way. Imagine you had a class of students and you asked them to arrange themselves in order of height. They could do that with the shortest here all the way up to the tallest here. Now ask them to arrange themselves in order of eye colour. How would you do it? What goes first? How do you decide? So if you're ever stuck with features that vary continuously or discontinuously, ask yourself that question. Could you order a class in terms of this feature? If you can, it's continuous. If you can't, it's discontinuous. So other examples are blood type or whether your earlobes are attached or unattached. It's basically either or measurements. One top tip I'd like to leave you with is if the feature can be measured, then it varies continuously. So think about things that can be measured. Height, hand span, uh, foot length, um, thigh length, arm span. All these things will vary continuously. If they can't be measured, not with a ruler or a weighing scale, then they are discontinuous. And that's how you can explain the difference between continuous and discontinuous variation.